Welcome back to the Entrepreneurial Edge. I'm Chris Bishop. Now, if you want to get in touch with us on social media, which we'll be talking about in a second, you can see the strap on the screen. Now, still in the studio with me, I have Mike Silver, the founder of Stretch Experiential Marketing. So, um, in a way, you've established yourself, but you are still the David and the David and Goliath scenario. You've got a massive competitor right there in Cape Town, Ogilvy and Mather. Yeah. Uh, how do you come up against these? I mean, these guys are, are colossal. How, how do you actually compete for business? I think one of the trends globally is um, the growth of boutique agencies. Um, guys like ourselves, a little bit more free thinking, a little bit cheaper. Um, <laughs> and um, I think that uh, brands quite enjoy that sort of hunger. Um, and uh, more and more we're able to eat at the table with these guys. Our offering is a very, very set offering, whereas a, an agency like Ogilvy will offer multiple um, types of, of, of marketing mediums. Um, and um, when the one type is questioned, we're the guys who can come in and just be part of the pitch and at the very least show what we can do. And even from your office in Cape Town, so you can see 200 yards down the road to their massive complex that they have. Right yeah. in the middle of town. I mean, how does that feel in the mornings? Well, it's, it's actually not the mornings. It's the evenings that's harder. When I'm driving past and our lights are off because we're trying to save money in electricity <laughs> and they've got massive illuminated signs outside. Um, yeah. So there speaks an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, no, I think, I think every time we can beat a large agency in a pitch, that's the nature of our business, um, we celebrate it. We've got this, um, we call it the new Boozella. It's a blue Boozella that we blow <laughs> when we can win business, a pitch against big agencies. And um, it's a big part of it um, that, you know, uh, drinks get open, pizzas get brought out. And we like to celebrate our wins because um, I think it, it is a David and Goliath. And um, at the same time, uh, you know, this expression, we're all the same lying down. W ideas are all the same on paper. It doesn't make a difference where they come from. Brands see ideas and say, whose is better? Now, with the world of brands and products hitting us from every direction, I mean, there's just been tremendous competition to come up with new ideas. And, uh, and this is what your business is about, isn't mm. it? Just tell us a little bit more. I mean, you mentioned before the show, you said that you once had a floating vending machine. I mean, not everybody would be immediately impressed when you told them. Yeah. But I mean, what, what exactly did you do? With the floating vending machine? Yes, I mean, well, um, what was I the idea? Was I got a phone call from my partner and our head of strategy. He phones me up one day, Pete, and he says, I've got it, Mike. It's genius. We're going to take a vending machine for Lipton iced tea and we're going to put it in the ocean and we're going to make people swim to it. Um, it's going to keep them cool. They're all about never lose your cool. And um, they're going to climb on board. And I said, are you joking? I said to him, I said, are you being serious? I wasn't sure if it was at the pub or not. Um, <laughs> and then we started unpacking the idea and we presented it to our client who in turn presented it to, uh, to Global. And um, they, thought it was they thought it was genius and they, and they loved it. And um, it, uh, it was quite amazing. So we had, I mean, if you want to hear a bit about it briefly, we had, um, we, this, you'd suddenly be sitting on Clifton Beach. Next thing, this vending machine would literally <laughs> float. I'd be, well, what the hell is that thing? Um, swim out there. And when you swim out, you get on board, you press a button like you do on a vending machine. You get sprayed with water. A camera takes a picture of you as you get sprayed. Um, get back to screen and you've got a picture of yourself on Facebook. The media laps it up. We've been getting emails from Turkey, Brazil, Argentina, Russia, asking how do, can we recreate this and, and just saying that it's, it's, an, it's a world first. So, yeah. <laughs> well, tell, tell your partner, I mean, world first, such a simple idea after all. No, no. I'm yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, and you said also you, you try to get a record for the amount of people, uh, well, what's the expression? Spooning. I believe it's spooning. Yes. Spooning, yeah. Well, yeah. lying down, that is like one behind another. Exactly. Uh, what was the point of that? Uh, the point of that was uh, a great client of ours, um, Stimroll Gum. They've got a mm. gum called Stimroll Infinity, and it's all about... Um, they're all about a gum that lasts on and on, and they mm. wanted to look at things that didn't last as long as their chewing gum. Uh -huh. We looked at it, and love doesn't last as long as their chewing gum, supposedly, because it just goes on and on, <laughs> the gum. And uh, we thought, well, let's have some fun with love. What can we do? So we put students in a speedboat, and we did speedboat dating, so mm. speed dating on a speedboat. And then we thought, well, let's get really crazy. Let's make as much noise as possible. Again, th th there is strategic value in the, the PR and the social media, but let's try to break the world record for spooning. And um, we got 560-odd students. Getting them to sit still was a big challenge. 
um, but we counted them, and it was it was really amazing, and uh, and that got a lot of um, coverage in, in the press and, and online. And where did you do this in Cape Town? This was actually in Pledenburg Bay, so I went back oh. to my old stomping oh. grounds. Um, for a spoon. I went back to the festival guys, and I said, "What do you think about a mass spoon?" Um, and they were all for it. So uh, yeah, we got a couple of them and the DJs involved. But don't you think you're lucky down there on the the southern tip of Africa? I mean, perhaps if you tried it here in Johannesburg, the police would come and move you on or something. Or they might do. Yeah, they might do. Yes, but, but um, no, we've we've got a couple of tricks up our sleeve for Joburg. So watch this space. But but I mean, the genesis of these ideas. How does it happen? I mean, somebody just walk in, sit down one day, and say, you'll never guess what. I mean, how, how do you keep going and coming up with new ideas? Well, you hear the old cliches, I came up with the idea in the shower or in the loo yeah. or things <laughs> like that. Um, we take a bit of a more strategic approach. Uh, clients will give us very set parameters, budgets. I mean, the budgets often can go into the millions. So you need to be very careful um, in terms of how we spend them because that's competing with TV and radio. So we need to generate impact. And then our strategy team will go away and they'll look at what's happening trend-wise, um, and then the fun will start with the concept development. Be honest, have you ever had a flop? As an idea or a mm, campaign? As an idea or a campaign. Um, we've, we've, I think we've, think we've thought things before would go differently. Um, the big challenge for us is we work in live environments. So we're creating real physical structures, shapes, um, and you know, we're often at the, at the whim of Mother Nature. So that can often be a challenge. But when you're selling uh, these ideas, don't people just sort of say, are you serious? You know, I mean, you really want to do this and go into the street and get people to do this, that and the other. I mean, do they ever say that? I don't know. Well, one of our best clients is, is, is Chevron and we love doing work with them. It's Caltex brand in South Africa. We do a lot of internal brand building. Mm -hmm. um, we went to them, it was the first ever job we did with them. And I thought, well, we're not going to change our approach just because it's a corporate. And we decided to propose to them that we were going to get paparazzi outside the head office. And uh, on a Monday morning when staff walked in, paparazzi would have cost them take pictures of them, ask for the autographs, all about making staff feel celebrated and important. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still surprised we got that through. So that sort of stuff is, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, I think a client needs to come on the journey and very often once they start with experiential marketing, it's hard for them to let go. <laughs> it's not your everyday sort of stuff, I suppose, no. is it? But, um, but also, what about the great world of social media? Yeah. I mean, uh, everyone says that this is the way to go to get the names of brands around as an entrepreneur. It's cheap, it's effective. I mean, there are even people, they say, who uh, sell their Twitter followers as marketers, etc. Do you believe in this kind of stuff as an entrepreneur? Well, I think there's two parts to it. Firstly, for our own business, social media is very important. We landed a really big tech client once because a guy I went to high school with saw uh, constant postings on Facebook and said, I see you guys doing cool stuff. He was a print supplier. He said, I think I can take something to my client. So I think it's very important. It gets to a point though where you can't rely on your own network mm. and eventually you sort of exhaust your own network. From a brand perspective, um, social media is very important because that's where the conversations are happening. I think that the challenge for brands is to say, is it worth being two minutes conversation in a day um, and then the day continues and you've forgotten about quite quickly? We like to be quite disruptive in our, in our work. So we like to disrupt spaces, shopping malls, festival spaces. And I think we, there's a lot of research behind the fact that experiential marketing is very memorable. Having said that, social media and PR are very important. We call it the holy trinity of experiential and we all work very well together. We'll give them the content to shout about and they'll use it. So mass spooning, they'll put it in, in their social spaces. Well, what about public spaces? I mean, I found in the last 30 odd years I've been a journalist. I mean, mm. when I first started, uh, you could people would go and do anything in the streets and no one would bother them. But now there's this public space seems to be diminishing in the fact that there's always someone there. So you can't do that. Yeah. That's outside my place. You can't do that. That's my business. You can't come here. You can't make noise. I don't know. Don't you have those sort of problems with your kind of stuff? I, I think we do. Um, I think that uh, when when Pete came from the UK, he he, uh, my partner, he said um, we used to talk about TIA a lot. This is Africa, mm -hmm. and I think this is Africa. You get away with a lot more than you mm -hmm. do in the UK. Health and safety is a nightmare sure, over there. Sure. So there is a lot more that you can do here. But I think. Um, I don't know if you remember the Dutch brand during the World Cup, the beer brand, oh, yes, they had the girls yes. with the orange dresses. Yeah, I remember, yeah, yeah. Sometimes not being allowed to do something is actually the story in itself. Mm. So uh, I think that it has pros and cons to it. Yeah, and the competition again must be extreme. I mean, are you not worried that there's uh, young 18 year olds out there sitting around a table or, or in their dressing gown, whatever, thinking of ideas that maybe might come along and worry you in the future as an entrepreneur? 
Definitely. Hopefully we're hiring those guys. <laughs> <laughs> You'll hire them in. Yeah, exactly. But I'm you get people coming on a Monday morning and say, listen, you don't know me, but I've got a brilliant idea. I just thought of it at the weekend. Do you get those sort of people knocking on your door? I got something last week. It was a YouTube, it was a guy for a job application from the Philippines, okay, applying. <laughs> he says, I love experiential marketing. I love what you do. And the whole video, the, 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 I guess the application was a pin with a paper bag over his head saying that he's in a creative jail at the moment and no one wants to listen to him over in Asia. And can I come out there? So I've seen some pretty crazy <laughs> things in my time, but um, I showed it to uh, around the office and the guy's like, wow, that's genius. <laughs> so uh, that sort of stuff does impress us. We like anything different. <laughs> so isn't it a bit of like the emperor's new clothes? Sometimes people say, oh, that's wow. Even though perhaps maybe it's not. I don't know. Are you going to launch this guy with the over his head in, in prison. Um, I, don't know. I think he's pushing it a bit. We might have a Skype conversation or maybe send him a, a thank you email. But uh, I think um, we, uh, we're impressed. There's a certain, I think HR has become a very, it's, as the business grew, it became a much bigger part of us. And the ability to spot young talent is crucial. And I think there's a certain hunger that you see when those people are in the room. And ironically, I think those people will in time become entrepreneurs. But there's that hunger that you, you kind of feel that energy and, and that's the person we want. Do you ever feel that you can't ignore or just it's very difficult for you to dismiss people who come up with ideas because I mean, it just might be that one idea that may make the difference? I think that the challenge is for them to know the brand strategically, know their objectives is very, very difficult. Um, but we've had, we had an intern once who came to us one morning and said, I've had this idea. Um, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty out there. You know, what do you think about it? And we thought, wow, well, we're not sure. And we put it at the back end of a presentation. Client got through. We, we throw multiple creative routes. They got the last one. They said, that's it. I don't want to hear any more. And we went, well, we spent hours on it. And it was our creative director was very involved in the process. <laughs> and um, so ideas can come from everywhere. I mean, sometimes we'll pull in people, our office manager, the accountants. Uh, you never know because you might say something and it sparks something in a creative. So um, in terms of market share, uh, what do you think uh, you'd be pulling now in terms of uh, South Africa? Uh, in terms of us as an agency? Yeah, as I, I think um, uh, without blowing our own horn, yeah. we're currently regarded as the premier experiential marketing agency in the country. So we speak a lot at Marketing Darba on um, other uh, shows like this, radio. Um, and um, I think that in terms of size, um, We've got five major clients in uh, Adidas, Chevron, Elizabeth Arden, uh, Lipton Ice Tea, um, and um, one more, Stimroll, that's it, um, <laughs> yeah. almost. Um, and from there, th th they've liked the work we've done, and we've grown now into these corporates. So Stimroll are part of Kraft, Lipton are part of Series, and who knows where it's going to take us, but um, yeah. So where do you plan to go? I mean, are you plan to be head of the biggest agency in Africa or do you plan one day to be sitting cross-legged on the top of uh, Table Mountain? I don't know. What, what's your dream for the future as an entrepreneur? I think our dream is, um, our vision was very simple and we, we had a, a chat about it the other day. We want to be the most respected experiential marketing agency in Africa. That, that's our initial goal. Um, we want to do work throughout Africa um, and um, I think at least in South Africa, we're coming close to that. We don't want to be the biggest. We don't want to take work on that's not creative. And the second part of it is, which is something we're introducing now, is we want to make real social change. And uh, we're now integrating um, uh, social aspects into our campaigns, pro bono work. And I think if we can bring use experiential to make a difference, um, that's something that quite, that quite excites us. It's, t it's never been about the money. And I know that you might not <laughs> believe that, but it's really been about the impact and something we can do that we're proud of.